Good morning, everyone. It's a Todd and Aaron morning stream on GetPartDaily.com. Before we start, before we go anything, this is something new. I want you to take a look here, and we have licorice, a duck, and a light. The first person who can tell me what they all have in common wins something. We don't... They don't really have anything in common. Oh. Just... So this is an impossible question, and you're psycho versus yeah. this actually being confusing. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, everybody on Facebook. How are you? We're so glad you're here. To the who's, mountain. Who's decorating for Halloween already? Come on, write it down. I want to know what you're doing. Um, let's go to the Morning Mountain Cam. It's brought to you by the Black Diamond Experts. Oh, Experts in look. electric, plumbing, heating, and air. It's good. There's a little bit of sun starting to come up. It's hard coming to work in the morning and when it's dark now because it was mm. so we got so spoiled over summer. I know. Oh well, it's yeah. the way it is. I can live with it. It's the way it goes. Coming up, we're going to tell you about um, first of all. Um, Buy my food or go to hell. Right. Elementary schools. How do they stack up? Um, Walmart not, wants to not only deliver your groceries, they want to come into your kitchen. And LL Bean has the best promotion going on right now and I can't wait to tell you. Really? Yeah. That's pretty sneaky. So um, I, before we go further, um, I want to tell you that uh, you know you see uh, commercials for drugs, mm -hmm. medications, mm -hmm. and they always say, oh, they have side effects and stuff like Exploding that. Exploding liver, your spleen's going to come out your leg. And, yeah. then, and then you see ones for the common uh, drugs that you're like, oh, but I thought that works, which they, they do. And then um, it's like a lawyer firm, and they're saying, call us, because this has caused If so aspirin and so. has given you, not right. taken away your right. headache. Is insulin caused your ears to explode? Because they're just looking for a reason to sue, and if they get a class action thing, and there's a settlement. Life is good, uh, yeah, exactly. So I saw one, and the first time I saw one for Vilify, and I, I don't even know a Vilify, a Vilify. Anyway, yeah, it's, I think a, it's an antidepressant. It's a, it's something. Well, th this is this is the deal. Evidently, it affects some people, or at least the lawyers think. So the the question they say is, if you have lost a lot of money gambling, please call this number. I'm gonna sue because I didn't know that I wouldn't win when I went to Las Vegas. I can't help but feel that I've been cheated. So in other words, what they're saying is it makes you more compulsive. Uh, there, well, there's some drugs that do cause impulse problems. Lamotrigine is one of those. Yeah. I mean, where, yeah, you just, it's, you, know, you don't know. You don't care. But so specifically to say that you went to Vegas and you gambled your money away. You know, I just can't picture that one flying in court. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. The lawyer for the casino goes, we're here to take your money, Your Honor. That's what we do. It's our thing. You probably already know that, but right. just in case anyone was confused, You're right. we're here to take your money. That's right. See, so now this is cool. I just Remem thought that was weird. Remember yesterday, I was telling you about that fighter pilot squadron that came out of Saudi Arabia to help yeah. on the ISIS bombing raid, and we and talked about the fact that that it was a woman who is the head of the lead plane, and you know, and she's magnificent. She wears her hijab in the plane and and everything. But um, I was thinking about the irony of this later. She can fly a fifteen million dollar jet. It's more than that. $25 million jet. It's more than that. $3,927 billion jet. Yeah, that's closer. But she's not allowed to drive. Right. Because it's Saudi Arabia. Mm. Well, the prince just changed that yesterday. Mm -hmm. And women are now going to be allowed to drive in ne Saudi Arabia. Next year. And the cool thing about that, though, is this, there's been a couple of women who have actually gone to prison because they broke the law and they drove like they had to take a child to the hospital mm. or there was an emergency. And so, and I think that was one of the elements that, they, that the royal family looked at and went, yeah... So that's good. Congratulations. I'm happy I, uh, for you. I would like to complain at this point because I am currently being. Um, You're really going to blame this on us. I would say torpedo, but that's something. Uh, I've been. I, I'm fighting the tide at my house because I've been working on. Oh, well, just t take 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 a look at this. I'm at Kentucky Fried Chicken, and they're calling to see if yeah, their uh, yeah. their uh, coleslaw is ready. I've been on a diet. I've lost three pounds, and Erin has sent me to Kentucky Fried Chicken. And once she said the words, right, two close on one mashed gravy, the twelve piece half and half, and six biscuits. Anything else? That's great. Thank you. Happy to have you. All right. So, yeah, I got the rolls. Yeah, because how could I get fat without them? So I am. Uh, you can't be uh, losing weight. And then all of a sudden have someone say, hey, uh, we're thinking about Kentucky Fried Chicken. Because once they say Kentucky Fried Chicken, 
your brain. Your brain goes berserk. And you, you think about it, it's like two hours later, and you, the whole two hours, all you're thinking about is the, the leaven herbs and spices and trying to figure out what the secret is. And there is no secret. Just friggin' spices and chicken and frying and skin and that. So I'm sitting at uh, almost 6 o'clock in the evening at Kentucky Fried Chicken on 4 South. I'm wearing sweatpants. I have no shoes on. And uh, I got my kids in the car. Zach, you want chicken? Jake. He wants chicken. Zoe, you want chicken? Jake. Yeah. Chicken. Everyone wants chicken. So uh, that that's my point. Jake. I am trying to lose weight. I'm trying to do the right thing. And I'm trying to eat uh, kale and stuff. And uh, this happens to me. So. That's how it works in my house. See? I'm sorry, the best part of that video is Zoe photobombing you in the back seat. <laughs> You're trying to if you distract. you know with his desperate little hands and everything were above, that would be our daughter. <laughs> you, you are uh, trying to distract this uh, because of the Kentucky Fried Chicken. You're thing. really blaming this on us. Absolutely. When you go on a diet, who is supportive? You are. Who buys you cauliflower? True, but you guys all st still eat Kentucky Fried Chicken. No, we don't. We've never eaten Kentucky Fried Chicken when you were on a diet, ever. Yeah, e you do. Ever. Yeah, you do. We've never bought Kentucky Fried Chicken when you don't eat Kentucky Fried Chicken. That is absolutely not true. You guys had last summer. Yeah. See, the problem is this. I don't think either one of us had consumed Kentucky Fried Chicken for... 25 years. 25 years. Maybe 30. And during a, a rough period... A, year and a half ago, somebody left this gigantic bag of Kentucky Fried Chicken on our doorstep, one of our neighbors. We don't know who because they didn't leave a note. And so we brought it in and Zoe took a bite and went, who has made this thing? I mean, literally just like that. And we're like, what have we done? And it's like, ever since then, we've all had this unnatural craving for KFC. I mean, we can't seem to stop ourselves. It's been a year we and a half. We crave it fortnightly. It has been a year and a half of like just this this essential culinary slavery to this dish. And, so and the worst thing is if somebody brings it up at like two in the afternoon and she says it to Zoe, our six year old, it's like, should we have Kentucky Fried Chicken tonight? And I can hear from the other room and I'm disgusted. And then for the next five hours, all you can think of is Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, funny Noel on Facebook goes, thanks Todd, now I want Kentucky Fried Chicken. See? I know, I'm sorry, right? See? I know. All right, now that you I'm sorry. Yes, uh, we'll all meet there. We'll go to the original one on, what, 45th and State. Okay. Um, what is this new thing? I'm going to put something together with So that. we're live on Facebook, obviously. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what's waving? The waving thing. What I, is it? Has anyone else noticed this? I, I've this had like, new? I have three little boxes that just popped up on my page, and they're like, Steve's waving at you. Dana is waving at you. Well, and this I'm like, is, didn't we used to poke each other? I remember the poking, but that was just like, it was just sort of mentioned somewhere. But right here, it like pops like, and it's like, tap to wave back. And then you're like, well, if I... If I don't tap, then I'm a, a jerk. But and if you do, it could start more. And then so I, I tried to click all three, and then two more just popped up. And I'm like, w when did this happen? Because I'm feeling a level of anxiety now of, yeah. of the obligation to wave back. This is new. Okay. I'm sorry, Daniel. We'll, we'll make your KFC extra crispy. Yeah. Really? You had to say those words? Extra crispy is the best. You're an evil woman. I uh, know. All right, speaking of food... I know. Let's Keep move selling on. Selling food. Well, no, this is actually um, pretty entertaining. I did not know that, but there are now like um, prep ministers. You know, the big prepper industry is huge. Right. And we've talked about this before, and there's all kinds of shows about doomsday preppers and blah, right, blah, right. blah. And there's a here in Utah. Now. And here in Utah, we're exceptionally good at it. Right. We're all pretty good about getting those supplies in in the emergencies. 72 hour kit. Bug out bags. Why not 80? Why not just 80 hours? Why not add that little extra time? And why 72? In any case, uh, there is... A hundred be rounded off, and he, it sounds better. He's a prepper pastor, Jim Baker, and he was encouraging the wealthy to buy a million dollars worth of his products because their money will soon be worthless when the end times begin and the financial system collapses. He says, and when you empty a bucket of food, just trust God to refill it. What's so, that mean? 
That, that means that once you eat it, it's okay because God's just going to refill it right back up. Like so the fishes and the loaves. Something like that, I guess. Uh -huh. There will be some kind of manna from heaven. Right. Someone actually once in church floated the theory that manna was zucchini because it was so easy to get. And we were all like, oh, my God. I don't That's know really manna, what it was meant. What's manna? Manna from heaven is the biblical phrase. Manna from heaven where there's food. Food will be provided for you. Like a buffet. No, not that easy, honey. Oh, okay. Probably would involve like, um, going to a field somewhere and picking okay. things. As I flip through. Um, but it says, do a million dollars worth of food. I'm serious, said the pastor. One, if you're one, rich. Wait, one person? The, this is the, the prepper pastor. Do a million dollars worth of food. One I'm person. serious. And I if see. you're rich, your money's going away anyway. It's right. not going to be worth anything. So why not sow that money to the Lord? Well, technically, pastor, we're not really sowing the money to the Lord. We're it's, giving it to it's you. It's going to you. It's going to you. It's not going to the Lord. So, so, I a proper what, pastor. I had no idea. What happens if you don't do that? You're going to go to hell. Does he say that? Pretty much, yeah. He says, um, all those those who do not use all their money to buy as much food as they can will have to answer to God. Does it say what? Seems very punitive. It doesn't say what's in the bucket. Wouldn't that make a difference? Like if it's like granola bars with chocolate stripes on it, you'd like a million dollars. I could do that. Right. But if it's like that freeze-dried ice cream. Right. That they took to the moon. And you have to add water to make it Why would fluff? you take ice cream to the moon? Just a thought. Just in principle. NASA. Why not? I, I just don't. It yeah, just, seems, it just seems a little punitive. I, I, I have weird taste, and sometimes when I'm bored uh, and I, I don't want to see politics anymore, I click through, and some of the close channels to the news stations are like the Knife Channel, which is awesome, and they have knives, or the and Jewelry who, who Channel. Who bought 100 knives off the Knife Channel? $69. Guess what I got? 100 knives. All made in China. That all, bent all when you All breakable used them. with a, with a uh, ear swab. I guess I guess them. a bendable knife could be considered a cool magic trick, but a hundred no. of them seemed disappointing. No, it was it was not good. Or jewelry, the jewelry channel is great because because you feel like you're holding something. And they're god awfully ugly, and that's incredible. But I did go through past one, and it's a religious channel, and the pastor was sitting there, evangelist, and he was selling bottles of water that had been blessed. So he had cases of this water where you could tell that just a new label was put over the old one. And he would, had blessed them, and he was selling them all. So for, he ran down to Smith's and bought a whole, like a pallet of water, and then he just put he the blessed, new label on No, he blessed it first. He blessed it first. And then he sold it for $20 a bottle. And they mail it to you. Get out. 20 bucks a bottle? Hmm. Wouldn't it be weird yeah. if that actually worked? i totally do that. You know, the sad part is I might actually fall for that at least once. At least once. At least you, once. Especially if you were thirsty. All right. This is kind of interesting. You know how everyone's starting to do these food delivery services now. A lot of grocery stores are saying, hey, look, order everything online, and then we'll have it waiting for you right here at the spot. You Harmers, know, Harman's, mm -hmm. I think, started with that drive-up in the mm -hmm. Brickyard Plaza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Smith's, some of the Smith stores are doing it. Fresh, you, Fresh Market, I you think, does it. pull up, and they uh -huh. bring it out, and they put it in your car. But yeah. what's this? Walmart wants to take this an extra step. Okay. Because I think they were spurred by the fact that Amazon will now deliver food to the house. They'll deliver groceries. So they're like, well, we'll, we'll deliver it. Fine, we can deliver it too. And then they thought, okay, if we can do that, why don't we just is go this a person, step further? Does this person live in this house? Or she, oh, okay, that's the lady who She's owns the, wife, the house. And she goes, I don't have any food. I'm going to run. I'm going to go out now and be healthy. Here I go. So I'm running now. Now, while she's out running, yes. Walmart what? is busy packing all of the stuff. She's at work now. Yeah, she has an active lifestyle. What's, what's Walmart doing? At the, uh oh. Here we go. And then look at his face. That he is a looks, nice boy. He looks like a good, honest that guy. That is a boy who also knows how to angle the label towards What's the camera. What's he doing? They give, you a, they give you the code. Oh, no. You give them the code, rather. Right. Then they notify you by phone. Hey, I'm coming into your house. Right. It's filthy. Right. Um, <laughs> What's the yeah, underwear see, doing on the banister? Yeah, right. Anywhere else. This is going to be beautiful and spotless because and see, you can actually watch them, watch them. on your phone. Look, here, he's putting away put the it eggs. Away. And see, that was one of the crucial things everyone always talked about is like, I don't want a stranger in my house going through my underwear drawer. But you can actually watch them on your phone. No, you can watch them put your his, your underwear on their heads. Deliver the food. And she's like, look, it's like Christmas. Thank you, Walmart. Okay, but it's interesting. So yeah, they actually want to deliver the food and then come in and then put it away for you. I don't you. think so. 
First of all, they'd be eaten by a dog. Number two, they're in my house. Well, you know what? I think most people actually don't mind the idea of someone else delivering it and putting it away. It's just that every single one of us have the same problem. Our kitchens tend to be filthy, and it's like, I don't need any more judgment in our, my life. Our, our kitchen isn't filthy anymore since we, we uh, moved to and renting a house. Yeah, it's the house is actually really clean now. This is like the first time since we've had children we've had a very clean house. But nonetheless, you know that they will judge you. There will be something, and you will be judged. I can't take any more judgment. Yes? No one's coming in my house. We don't have anything we're stealing. What are you worried about? What I would do, what I would do is I would go ahead and, but you can't order produce because you want to look at the apples. You want to look at the celery. You want to pick that stuff out. So you're going to be there anyway, so why not just finish your shopping? But what I would do, and I, this is serious. Or maybe they could just do staples, like deliver that we case don't need load of a, we toilet don't, paper. We don't need processed food. So Okay, so here's the deal. Um, um, there's one thing about shopping I hate. I do the food shopping, and I like doing the food shopping. It makes me feel like I'm nurturing the family, plus I get away from the kids. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and I go through, and, and I pay for it, still loving it. I take it to the car, loving it. Put it in the car, loving it. Drive home, open the doors, hating it. I hate bringing food into the house. Why do you hate that so much? Because it really just, is your thing. I just, I, I'm the one who will take 30 bags at one so, time. So basically, so Walmart could follow you in a car right, right, right. See, to the house. See? Then they could take the grocery bags out now of the car and bring thinking. them into the house for you. Now you're thinking. You could deal with that. Yeah. They could just get in the back of the pickup truck in the bed, you know, and then they bring a bicycle with them. And then they ride back to the store. That seems very labor intensive for me. <laughs> Not Walmart. for me. I'm just sitting on the couch watching them put away my food. Or even on the counter is good. You just have to get close to the kitchen. So I don't have to carry it 30, 40 feet. I know it sounds weird. So you want them the to alter their entire marketing premise just to make sure that you are comfortable with having someone else carry your bags this, into the house. This is plan B. I know. This is my How life. much would it cost for the other way when they show up at your house and they unlock your door? Oh, and they walk into your house. Oh, and then they watch, you watch them on video do weird stuff. And then they like leave. put away your groceries. Yeah. Who who know who knowing that they're going to be on camera is going to do anything weird? Nobody. Weirdos. I what? Don't, I don't like the idea. What is wrong with you? Should we take, since we're talking Halloween and that's your favorite thing. Ooh, Kurahara corn maze. I've been waiting for these to come up because there's three different ones. And Alex has made every single one of them absolutely amazing. Have a look. Alex, you, Alex, you, you can you know, stand up. You're right there. It's your corn maze. Hi, Alex. <laughs> Hello, how are you guys? All right, it's the Kurahara corn maze and pumpkin patch. And this is free, the whole thing. This is a destination. Now tell us about the pumpkin patch first. I mean, the corn maze. Okay, our corn maze has three different locations. You can go in the scary one, you can go in a uh, dead end one, which you have to retry again and go to the one to get out. What's a dead picture, end one? I have this picture of sending all the people I don't like in the dead end one, and they're just kind of circling around I'm like cattle. I'm hoping that's when they pick. <laughs> <laughs> now the pumpkin patches though, Zoe, my daughter, is freaking out over your Cinderella one because I was telling her a little bit about it. But you've got three different kinds. Yeah, so the three different pumpkin patches we have is one Cinderella's castle, that one's going to have a uh, girl theme, you know, Cinderella pumpkins, um, worded pumpkins for like witch pumpkins, you know, really fun pumpkins for girls. Uh, we're going to also have a Frankenstein cemetery pumpkin patch that's going to have Frankenstein pumpkins. Which are those? Yeah. They're green, they're really, really cool, fun for like heads, you know, paint. You know, like Frankenstein, and then okay. we'll have ghost pumpkins in that one too because it's a cemetery. <laughs> I love those kind. And you, since you do have all the designer pumpkins, you also have the Nightmare Before Christmas theme. Yeah, and that one's just regular pumpkins. So you can get big ones, small ones, great pump, great carving ones though. Okay. And that one's just like really decorative, so great for pictures. Now, wait a minute, this, the, the corn maze is free. Yes. All the activities <laughs> in the pumpkin patch are free? Yes. All we ask is come buy pumpkins, you know, and pumpkins are really good priced. You know, it's going to be really fun pumpkin picking experience you right know? that's the main thing about us is we want to make a pumpkin picking experience and have some fun things to do let's all disappear oh, okay. mysteriously come on Bye.
All right, so I got to tell you, they, he showed us a picture. The uh, pumpkin field's fairly close by, but he showed us a picture on his phone. Uh, folks, the, they got pumpkins. Now, here's the cool thing. It's one of those destination pumpkin patches because it's the theme, and so you can take the kids through all of the different themes. It's, it's free. free, which is killer. The uh, corn maze is free when you get pumpkins, and you're going to anyway because they've got all the cool designer pumpkins. But this is the one, like, if you're one of the Pinterest moms where you totally dress up the kids because I used to do that, like, with the matching fall sweaters and with the chunky cable knit and everything, and, and you want to get the pictures with the pumpkins and be all adorable, this is the place. I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous. But it's going to be fun. I mean, he spent $30,000 to, to create this whole, and like, gigantic escapade of awesome. When's it open? 27th, this Friday. said. This Friday. Oh, cool. That's a lot of fun. This things. Friday, he's got a lot of work to do. All right, so, so uh, before before we go to uh, news, got to tell you that there's a co-author of a scientific paper, and they're eight years old. I know. Isn't that cool? Well, let's get some information first. All right, that's Daisy, of course, in the Gephardt Daily Newsroom. She is brought to you by Fink and McGregor. That is fink-mcgregor.com. Um, and if you go there, you will find a plethora of mortgage options because they are mortgage brokers. So they have a lot of different things you can do. Mortgage is made simple. Just go to fink-mcgregor.com. Also, by all Utah plumbing, heating, and air. This is the perfect time to give them a call because something has to be turned off, something has to be turned on, something has to be serviced to make sure it's safe. And they're the ones to do it at allutahplumbing.com. Daisy, my dear, what is going on this morning? Hello, everyone. Here's what's making headlines Wednesday, September 27th on GebhardtDaily.com. Unified police are investigating a fatal motorcycle crash in Big Cottonwood Canyon. Detective Chuck Malm told Gebhardt Daily a man was headed down the canyon Tuesday afternoon when he slammed into the canyon wall just above Big Cottonwood's famous S-curve. Malm said the victim is a 62-year-old area resident. His identity was being withheld pending notification of family members. Investigators have yet to determine if alcohol or drugs were involved in the crash. A Spanish forkman charged in the strangling death of his wife is back in the Utah C County Jail after a judge increased his bail tenfold. 35-year-old Nick Curtis Nichols was out on $100,000 bail until Monday when the judge in his case increased bail to $1 million cash only. Nichols is charged with murder and three counts of domestic violence in the presence of a child in the August 24th strangulation death of his wife, 35-year-old Robin Curtis. Another Utah high school has been invaded by bats. Hundreds of the winged marbles have taken up residence in the auditorium at Leighton High School, and now the district has hired a private company to find the bats to a new home. About 400 of the furry critters have been captured so far, and there are about 1,000 yet to go. The school says every precaution is being taken to prevent students being exposed to the bats. You may recall hundreds of bats invaded West High School earlier this month. And now let's have a gander into our Wasatch Front weather, where we'll see temperatures in the low 70s the next three days. A chance of rain Thursday, but we dry out a bit heading into the weekend. Nighttime lows will remain in the 40s. That's it for now. For more local headlines 24-7, go to GearParkDaily.com. Todd and Aaron, back to you. Thank you, Daisy. All the high schools are getting. Bats. Remember, it was bats in, at uh, West High on Monday. I got to tell now you. Now it's Leighton High. Daisy is so afraid of bats. I know, that makes me so sad. Like, like the phrase that you wouldn't pull a trick on her to be funny because she would die. And that level of, yeah. And then she'd kill you. Yeah, with clowns, I just will dry heave repeatedly for an hour, but she might actually keel over. I learned something yesterday talking to John at all Utah Plumbing. Did you? And air. Yeah. So I was hanging out with him, and uh, we decided that uh, we wanted to go over a list, go over a list of things you need to do in the fall. Okay. And one of the things that I did not know was true was uh, the fact that uh, we uh, you change your, your f filter in your furnace. Furnace filter. Uh -huh. Right. How often do you change it? Me? No. Till it turns black? A person. A normal person? A normal person. And let's say it's the thin is, ones. Is it like every couple of years or something? I don't know. Why are you looking at me like I just shot a puppy? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know either. <laughs> so he told me every 30 days. No. If it's the thin one, it's every 30 days. For a furnace. For a furnace. And I didn't know that. And what happens is if it gets dirty, your furnace is working harder. You won't get the airflow. You won't get the heat. Um, and I did not know that. But uh, we went over the fact of what what people are doing, turning your outside faucets off. If you can't, you get one of the styrofoam deals. We talked about that. We talked about taking the hoses off. 
your to your faucet. I gotta go do that. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, if, if you need any help, all Utah Plumbing, just go to allutahplumbing.com or give them a call 801-652-4755. Is this eight-year-old from here? Where is this smart person well, from? Well, I can't help but feel a little protective about this girl because yeah. eight-year-old girls apparently are not often encouraged to play with bugs and insects. But Sophia Spencer, my kid is loves bugs and insects. Good. Zoe, Zoe had like this one poor grasshopper she found that had been wounded, and she kept it every day. And she was petting. I said, "You can't touch its eyes," and she's like, "It loves me to touch its eyes." And uh, you know, she, Zoe's the kind of girl that like, emptying her pockets at laundry time is like this exercise in terror Pill bugs. because you have no idea what's going to be right. in there. Uh, but, we actually, Zoe and I, actually caught the second largest insect in North America, oh, and it was a thing. water beetle, and it was this big, and it was awesome, and she was a champ because of it. No, I can fake being happy at home, but I can be nauseous here. Don't. In, it was amazing. They did this praying mantis little nest, and like 18,000 praying mantises came out of it in the spring. It was just like, it's it's not like the tulips that you, know, you wait for. It's you know like the cool thing about praying mantises is like you're here, and they reach for you, and it's just like. I know, I know. And then, they, they, and then they just start leaning forward, and they start crawling on you, but it's really slow and deliberate. Yeah, I know. I know, because Zoe put one on me once. Thank uh -huh. you so much. It's awesome. In any case, uh, Sophia, this is kind of sad because she was teased at school because For she what? really liked Being bugs. smart? Because they'd be running around and she'd be in the corner going, oh, look, you know, it's a there caterpillar, blah, blah, blah. She's adorable. Blah. Look at that sweet little face. She's precious. Well, so her mom, Nicole, was really worried about her daughter's confidence because things are going so haywire. Yeah, because she's going to be smart. She, she wrote a letter to the Entomological Society of Canada asking for encouragement. She said, she's asked me for over a year, is this a job, is there a job I can do with this? And she, I told her about entomology. And she wanted to, she said that, of course you can. So I was wondering, um, would a professional entomologist be, entomologist be willing to, Speak to her over the phone. Oh, yeah. Nice. You're her heroes. You know, nice. this would be like Michael Jordan calling somebody. But for My her. dudes and, 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 and bug girls. And so, women. And it's very sweet. And she says, I'm always looking for articles for her, but I don't know what to do. Right. So here's the thing that's adorable. Number one, uh, hundreds of entomologists, females and otherwise, um, then all went up on the Twitter feed for the society. And they were all encouraging her and giving her support. And mm. there was this big hashtag that actually went national in Canada that was hashtag bugs are for girls. One entomologist told Sophia, you can visit my lab anytime. Really? Another one sent her a whole bunch of books and all kinds of equipment. Right. But here's the part that kills me. Uh, Morgan Jackson's a PhD of entomology from um, Ontario. And um, she actually co-authored a scientific paper with him oh. that was published in academic journals all oh over the my world. Oh, gosh. I mean, tell me that. She's been published. Isn't that the most awesome That's thing crazy. ever? She goes, I, I believe this now that I can grow up and I can study bugs and definitely grasshoppers. But I just love the fact that this is an eight-year-old. This has got to be the first eight-year-old who has co-authored a academic paper about entomology. You know what the entomologists should do to encourage boys and girls for this? Uh, they should do a bug of the month club. And so every month you get a box. It'll be like this big. And then you get to open it and go, ah! and there's a new bug in it every month. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. A spider mm -mm. just mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. leaping spider. Hey, we wanted to uh, thank you. Sometimes we forget to. We want to thank you for uh, viewing and, and listening and watching on every platform in the world, including SoundCloud, including what? Uh, everywhere. YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, if you go on Get Part Daily. And the nice thing is you can do it any time of the day or night. We are a stalker. We're stalking you. We're really there. Well, and We're thank overly you. available. What better way to thank you than with a big juicy steak. A big juicy steak from Christopher's. So what we're doing is we're having you sign and go ahead and comment on the uh, Facebook page as we speak. And say, hey, uh, you can say something weird, uh, but, but make it nice. And then we take those and we'll pick... A name on Friday, three of you, three friends, and you get to go to Christopher's and have an incredible meal. And they, they will treat you like the little princess you wanted to be, and you get to sit and talk and laugh. You get to pay back those social obligations because they threw a party and you came, and then you're like, I should invite them over to the house right. and have dinner, and I didn't want it. This is work. And, people, and it's just a great night. People want the steak. I can see them right now. Uh, I know. We want to join you. It's incredible. Right. They had this lamb chop thing going on for a while that was apparently like... 
like like some sort of drug because one of our winners went there and then she went back every week for the next month. Nice. <laughs> so it was, there you go. All right, so anyway, you can do that on all of our Facebook pages, Get Part Daily, Get Part Approved, or the Todd and Aaron Facebook page. And you're entered to win, and then we'll draw a winner on Friday, and boom, you're done. Coming up next, a huge pot bust. A mountain of pot. Next. Todd and Aaron's Morning Stream, brought to you by Black Diamond Experts. Electric, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. You'll be glad you called an expert. Fink and McGregor, mortgage is made simple. Make sure you go to fink-mcgregor.com and try out their four-minute mortgage program. It's incredibly easy to find out whether you qualify. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is actually available anytime at gepharddaily.com. Just click on the Todd and Aaron page. All right, so I want to tell you a story because it is... A huge story. And you know, a lot of local places, a lot of local uh, towns and stuff, they don't have a lot of drug action going on. So a lot of the cops and the stuff, they don't get a chance to make a drug bust. And so, and I'm, I'm sure they feel bad because they get to see these pictures of all these drugs stacked up on top of a car that some highway patrol guy pulled over. You want to be one of those officers sitting there with a big mountain of confiscated illegal substances. Well, it happened in Missouri. It happened in Missouri for the cops and the sheriffs there because the National Guard helicopter, actually they had to call in the National Guard because they found a huge amount, well, take a look, a huge amount of marijuana growing. And so they were like, ah. I mean, we, like fields, we, fields of fields it, like you would do with alfalfa, except for like that it was hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so what they did is they cut it all down and they put it in these nets and they're going to put it into a landscaping trailer, right? And so they took all these pictures of them. You know, you got to have the pictures. Hundreds of you photos. Got, you got to have the they pictures. They threw it up on Facebook and then people on Facebook started commenting. And one of the biggest things they commented was uh, that, that that's not pot. It's, it's hemp. It's hemp. Explain the difference. Hemp, uh, first of all, the, I've read, hemp is used, used for fiber to make rope. Also, you can make clothing with it. There's all kinds of amazing applications for hemp. It's there really, are. it won't get you high. It's, 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 it's a non-psychotrophic. There's nothing there. There's nothing that you can, in it. There's nothing there that you can smoke that would get you high. However, it is delightfully similar to in make fiber to make, to clothes and paper and all this other thing. But saving grace for the cops is the fact that it's still illegal to grow. It is, unless oh. <laughs> you have a permit. <laughs> and they had a permit. <laughs> So now they've destroyed uh, someone's crop, and, and they got pictures. Oh, they took them down off Facebook. I know, because I, I tried. I tried to race to the the police. The, no, the police all, things, uh, Facebook to see if I could grab the photos, and they'd no, already pulled it's, them. It was gone. Not in a mean way. I just kind of wanted to get them. All right. You know. So what is this uh, pitch perfect thing? I see. Okay, this is a little present. It's just for Todd. Me. Have okay. a look. All right. What's up, pictures? <laughs> Hey, Bellas! So what do you want us to sing tonight? I brought this, just in case. We didn't invite you guys to sing. We invited you to watch. Uh, excuse me? I just thought you guys were so busy with your okay. awesome job. Right. It's Pitch watch. Perfect 3. Am, yes, yeah. baby, they're back. Why? Todd is, Todd, Todd is madly in love with Anna Kendrick, and he absolutely no, loves Pitch over. Perfect. I've and if you notice, on. Rebel Wilson, the blonde, who is the cutest thing ever, she's the one who just won that big court case in Australia because they totally slandered her. But yes, and, and, moved, and, the, and the title is, We're Back, Pitches. <laughs> it's, oh, come on, I thought you'd be excited. It's pitch perfect. Not, I've moved on. You're such a liar. From Kendrick. No, I actually have. Well, but you love Pitch Perfect. I thought it was fun. And it's the third one. That makes it You bad. watch Pitch Perfect 2 like 827 times. No, I actually didn't. You're really going to do this to me. No, I just... I thought I was giving you a little treat. No, that was really nice. But, uh, Kendrick, I have moved on after the cup song. And <sighs> I have moved on now. And I'm looking... Any suggestions you can put up on Facebook who I should stalk, I mean, admire, a uh, female You still have Olivia Munn, honey, so that's good. I have what? Olivia Munn. You like her, too. Which one is Olivia Munn? Oh, that, yeah, she's good. I like her. She's, she's nice. Um, they have to be talented. And they have to have a sense of humor. That's it. 
That's fine. Oh, by the way, I didn't tell you this. Kuahara, um, if you want to um, go to the Facebook page, mm -hmm. um, just like the post you'll see on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to randomly pick six lucky families to come out, and they get to fill one of their wagons. I mean, like, to bursting free with pumpkins and take them home. Awesome. That is a cool prize. I would totally go for that one. That is a very cool prize. Right? So it's Kuahara. Uh, pumpkin patch and corn maze and once again it's 122 south 7th west in draper so yeah i just wanted to remind everybody about that because the big fat wagon of pumpkins i thought was a pretty awesome price just just we're going to talk about elementary schools in utah and uh, the grades aren't doing well it's just we had a drop had at a our drop. kids school at our kids school i well, i don't that's coming up next yeah yeah we're brought to you this morning by Executive Transportation. Elegant service, professional style. Go to executiveutah.com. And All Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best. 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com. Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud, and gepharddaily.com? Did you know you can buy a house with a 600 credit score? Really? We have lenders, we have programs, stuff that's come up in the last couple of years, 600. Wouldn't you have to have like 50% down or something though? Nope, three and a half percent. Where would you start the process on this? Well, Fink and McGregor has a website, 4minutemortgage.com. Just go there, fill it out, up and running. How long until you get back to us? One business day. The whole thing takes about a month, start to finish. Where do you get the down, though, if you're broke? It can be a gift from family, relative, significant other, even your work. Gift, huh? Yeah. You know what that makes me wish? What? Makes me wish I had friends with money. <laughs> All right, I figured out who my new crush is. I, I do. I just figured it out. Uh, Ghostbusters, the crazy girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why can't I remember her name now? I don't know, but she's on Saturday Night Live. And she is. Um, she plays the crazy... Uh, she's the one who plays Hillary Clinton on Saturday Night Live. She Saturday. is. And Kate I, McKinnon. Yeah, Kate McKinnon is my new... Is Kate McKinnon. Thank Kate you. McKinnon. I have a crush on her. I know, right? Isn't she yeah. adorable? Daisy does, too. Everyone has a crush and on her. And, you know, and you know what's nice Everyone. about it? She's adorable. It's Daisy. It's da she's a lesbian. So, so it's okay. Platonic. Really, this could totally yeah. be like you know, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, but for Daisy, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, for Daisy, this could be an option. Okay, but, but for you, you just get to is, enjoy her performance. She is so funny. Oh my gosh. If you ever do get a chance and you haven't seen this, go on to uh, YouTube and pull up Saturday Night Live, um, the alien abduction and, and the them. Santa Claus abductions. Yeah. And you, I won't explain it, but you will just wet yourself. You'll laugh that hard. And, I mean, and, seriously. And it's a little mature. Okay. So. It's extraordinarily funny, though. <clears throat> All right, Sad so news. Is this going to bum me out? Well, no, it's not great. Okay, now, Utah requires that public schools give a letter grade based on student proficiency and growth on the student assessment of growth and excellence tests. Okay. Now for high schools the, and graduation rates, those figure into their grades as well, but for elementary schools, literacy test results factor into the letter grades. So Zoe's literacy test was very good, by the way, so that will help our school. In any case, though, they had th this last year was not good. For some reason, slightly more Utah elementary and middle schools received D's and F's. Oh, boy. There, were, there was a slight raise in C's, which I guess is good, and then a big drop in A's and B's. And they're still trying to figure out why, because there was, really wasn't any kind of comprehensive reason, like attendance didn't change or right. a lack of funding for right. additional tutoring or any of those things. But they said the change was noticeable enough. Really? And the fact that it was... C's and F's. The direction went down so badly to D's and F's that they were trying to figure out what happened exactly. I think it's so, the fluoride. You think it's the fluoride? Or vaccines. Or chemtrails. Evil dogs who live in the forest? Mm hmm Squids with teeth? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know either. All right, so coming up, uh, we got information time. 
Oh, yeah. Let's go to Daisy. She is in the Gephardt Daily Newsroom dreaming about Kate McKinnon, who I also have a crush Kate on. Kate McKinnon! She's adorable. Okay, uh, but she's brought to you by Fink and McGregor. If you go to fink-mcgregor.com, you will see why mortgages are made simple. There are so many different options. You can get a mortgage with a credit score as low as 600. Also, someone can call you back on the next business day if you'd like some help. Also by Black Diamond Experts. They are experts in electric, plumbing, heating, and air. They also just got a brand new office in Ogden. You can reach them at blackdiamondexpert.com. Daisy, what's going on today? Good morning, Tonner, and hello again, everyone. Here's a look at National and World News Wednesday, September 27th on GebhardtDaily.com. The Taliban and the Islamic State have claimed responsibility for a rocket attack at the airport in Kabul, Afghanistan, Wednesday, which they say was an attempt to kill U.S. Defense Secretary James Maddis. Dozens of rockets were launched at the airport just hours after Maddis arrived in an unannounced visit. A number of hangars were damaged and several helicopters damaged or destroyed. Maddis had already left the airport at the time of the attack. There were no reports of injuries. Over 30,000 people have been evacuated Wednesday after a series of explosions rocked a Ukrainian ammunition depot. The first blast was reported Tuesday night and explosions continued into the day Wednesday. About 1,200 firefighters have been called in along with 600 members of the Ukrainian National Guard. The government says the explosions are an act of sabotage. And some bad news for Donald Trump, whose favored candidate was soundly defeated in Alabama's GOP Senate primary runoff. Luther Strange conceded his controversial to his controversial opponent, former Alabama Supreme Court Judge Roy Moore, Tuesday night. Moore was removed as Chief Justice after he refused to take down a Ten Commandments monument. He was re-elected to the job only to resign after he refused to follow the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling legalizing same-sex marriage. He'll face Democrat Doug Jones in the December general election. That's it for now. For more headlines from across the country and around the world, go to GiveHeartDaily.com. Todd and Aaron, back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Daisy. We appreciate it. Okay. I'm excited for the people in Ogden because they now have a black diamond up there. These are the black diamond experts, which means electric, plumbing, heating, and air, which means they go through your house. They make sure that they test your furnace and make sure that there's no scary emissions, that everything is nice and safe for winter, ready to go. Maybe you just need a quickie tune-up. That's fine. Um, they can also help you shut everything off outside so that it doesn't freeze and explode and burst your pipes and all those things that we hate. And the nice thing about them is they also are 24 hours. So if you have something explode and it ends up in your basement, they're the guys you call because they will take care of it for you. Now, it's very easy to reach them. Just go to blackdiamondexpert.com. All right. I have a, a, a new part of our show. It's my favorite thing. It's called What Happens Next. This should be good. That's awesome. The lady decides to go to dinner and uh, her and her family they go, what do you feel like? And they say Longhorn Steakhouse. One of their favorite places in the it's world. It's delicious. <clears throat> so they go in. It's a little busy. The hostess says, take a seat. We'll be right with you. And they do. Her whole family's sitting there. And suddenly she feels a pain on her foot. Guess what happens then? Someone stepped on her foot while they were racing to get to the buffet. <clears throat> Her family said, hey, mom, what's wrong? Guess what happens next? She says, ow, my foot hurts? No. And then she reaches down and she puts her hand on her foot. Guess what happens next? Uh, what, is it like a bug bite or something? No. And then she feels something moving. Guess okay. what happens next? Tell me. She pulls a copperhead snake off her foot. Those are wildly venomous. Yes, they are. How did a copperhead get in, snake get into the Longhorn Texas Steakhouse? I don't know, but it was only like eight inches long, so it was like a baby. Doesn't but matter. They still have plenty of venom. They still have all the poison in them. And then she uh, obviously had to go to the hospital for 11 days and evidently can eat uh, for free at <laughs> Longhorn Steakhouse. For the rest of their life. Now, wait, there's got to be some sort of, there's always some sort of like rebuttal or explanation from the management that always is like... Reeks of desperation. Is there a good one here? Because I believe so. Well, Longhorn spokesman Hunter Robinson said, the bite was a highly unusual incident. We are working with our facilities team to see how the copperhead may have occurred. We're taking steps to prevent it from happening again. What's it become, like really? a special? There's, there's copperhead snake 
steps that you can take. I, Desnaking your restaurant. That's a, probably an important one. Except for I don't want to be the minimum wage employee to go, hey, you, you go start that. crawling around all of the tables, <laughs> underneath all the tables, and start looking under all the furniture. See if you can find any of the copperheads, okay? Coming I up, quit. Coming up next, L.L. Bean. This is really cool. This is the best campaign I've seen in a long time. It's it is really cool. It's coming up next. We're brought to you this morning by Executive Transportation. Elegant service, professional style. Go to executiveutah.com. And All Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best. 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com. Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud, and gepharddaily.com? All right, so I want to tell you a story. This is, uh, this is going to be, first of all, let's do the, the White House thing. Let's do the White House thing. Okay, we could do that first. And talk, talk about the... Uh, Melania uh, Trump. Now, you may remember that this actually started with Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama created this big garden, and she actually modeled it after the victory garden that Mrs. Roosevelt created during World War II. Right. She had turned part of the White House lawns into a big victory garden. Everyone's every, like, how yeah. could you tear up the lawn? And she's like, because everyone needs a victory garden, and I want to garden by example. Victory garden used during World War I and World War II to grow your own vegetables because the other vegetables were going for the troops. So in any case, Michelle Obama said, this is a great idea. I'm going to start it again. And she did it because she was really trying to push healthy eating for kids and like produce and school. Yeah, yeah. And, and different things. So there was a, a ton of stuff. Well, apparently, it, no one knew what to do because there weren't any instructions. So they kept watering this year and continued on. And Meliana Trump took a look and went, I could do that. So she's a farmer now. So she grabbed a bunch of 11 and 12 year olds. She said, Come help me harvest. And so they started cutting up the lettuce and the radishes. Nice. And, and it's very cute. It's very funny because there's this immaculate White House kitchen behind them. And these kids are tromping through with just these filthy, Mud. muddy feet. And That's you know so the funny. chefs are just like, eh, 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 the whole time. But I thought that was very cute. It she kept it going. Cute. So good for you. So um, when I went to college, Unity, Maine, in the middle of nowhere, 350 students, 12 women, basically training to work for the state in... Uh, Where he did competitive collegiate chainsawing. I just discovered this last week after 20 years of marriage. All right, I have to show you how to do that. Okay. All right, so um, we'd go down and uh, go down to Boston and stuff where my family was, and we'd visit, and we'd all, people from Connecticut and everything, and then we'd just kind of all get back together and get in the same car, and we'd drive north. We always stopped in Freeport, Maine. Freeport, Maine is the home and the only location of L.L. Bean. They, oh, it's the mothership. They took oh, it's the only ship. Really? They took over. They They're online right? now, but they took over yeah. the entire towns with huge warehouses. They employ everybody. They're really good to their employees, and they have LL Bean stuff, which is like high end. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous. Now too. it's also open twenty four seven. Oh. And so it'd be two in the morning, and we'd be going back, and, and there would always be and canoes you'd, available you'd, to you. You would feel you, the guy driving kind of take an exit, and everybody wake up. And we'd pull into the parking lot, usually pretty empty at 2 in the morning. Get a turtleneck. And we'd get out, and everyone went to, I always went to the same place, which is the wooden canoes, and they have they had brass nails that held it together. And it was a packing canoe, which means it had a yoke, and you could take it and potage. And you could wear it over your shoulders and walk, because they're really light. And you could walk with it when you potaged. Portage. Going around a, f a waterfall, you carry your stuff around every single time. And portage. I would take it and I'd put it on the back and i go, someday I will own one of these. I will portage. And I will hang it in my living room after I portage. Well, I know I know what to get you for Christmas. <laughs> Although, is the living room specific or yeah. could it be the garage? Or No, it's got to be the living room. So anyway, the point is, is that they've got a TV commercial going on right now, which I think is awesome. The guy's inside, he opens the front door, he looks down, and the mat says, welcome, facing the street. He takes it, he turns it around, so it says, welcome to the outdoors, which I think is brilliant. But they're running this full-page ad right now. In and New York. They ran this in New York City. And so you're thinking, oh, that's cool. You know? So all it says is it's a big... Blank. That's expensive for a big blank. Wildly expensive. And it says uh, LL Bean, like a letter here, letter there. And you cannot see the ad or the announcement or the invitation until you go outside in the sunlight. You put it out in full sunlight, and that's the first time that you can see the ad. Isn't that clever? How amazing 
is that? That is so clever, though, because it's the whole point of everything they do in their entire marketing campaign. So what a logical thing to do. You have to be outdoors. To see it. Isn't Which, that clever? I just think that is the smartest thing. I love that. And so somebody's looking at it going, huh, dopes. That's the, <laughs> They're that's stupid. A mistake. But I think that, yeah, that's so intriguing. I think that is so cool. What a great thing. All right. Now, I've, I've, I've seen kids do this where it's like a snowy day and they're sliding on their shoes and they'll grab a bumper. And I'm sure knowing you your... Call it? I'm sure knowing your desire to kill yourself as a child through every possible measure, I really don't know how Miss Virginia... World's you. record in Lexington, Massachusetts. And this is not because I'm brave. This is because I'm an idiot. Uh, 57 miles an hour behind a Volkswagen bug. And what the do problem, they call that? Well, it depends where you're from. We call it bumper riding. Other people call it skitching. Uh, the only problem with skitching and bumper riding is at 57 miles an hour and you're crouched down on your shoes and you're being pulled by the bumper and the Volkswagen's trying to make it through the snow and you're having a great time. When you finally say, that's enough, and you let go, the car disappears. It goes like this and here you are sliding down the road alone uh, at 57 miles an hour and trying to keep your balance. The problem is, is that as you're going down the road like this, the roads in, in New England are crowned slightly <laughs> so you have this kind of effect so you end up at a snowbank and every you're time coming down like this and you just slowly start fading to the side until you hit the snowbank and where's Todd in a ditch yeah that's great I have less parts than I had earlier uh, so anyway you know you really don't need all those ribs some of them are really probably just optional so it's okay so it's kitchen it's kitchen Okay, this guy kind of took this a little little higher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This gentleman decided he wanted to take a little ride. Oh my gosh. And this is in Australia. Uh, he decided Dude. to, look what he's hanging on That's to. That's just like the windshield wiper, isn't it? So he's standing on the, the, the coupling that he couples to, uh, it would couple to another train. And he's standing on that and the only upper body connection he has to the train is hanging on to the windshield wiper. Wow, that looks super secure. Now, people started taking pictures of this guy and they started posting it. And next thing you know, the authorities found out. This is actually while it was happening. And someone contacted the police. They contacted the transit We people. couldn't help but notice there's someone clinging to the back of your train going 70 miles an hour. 70 miles an hour. How incredible is that? No, that's really horrifying, oh, that's actually. Awesome. Actually, that's really horrifying. He probably went, I totally had this. Totally, man. <laughs> you know he said something stupid like that. It was fine. What's the penalty? Besides a I, nice job. No, there should be something very stern because that's like, that's like sanctioned suicide or something. I, think it's I awesome. totally had it. A couple things. Had the windshield wiper. Don't forget about the pumpkin deal. Yes, make sure you just comment on the Kuwahara pumpkin patch corn maze post on Facebook today. And by the way, don't forget the corn maze is also free when you get a pumpkin and you get to go through all the different little theme areas. They're very cute. Christopher's. Always important. And you mentioned make a comment. And make a comment and then we're gonna draw a winner for on dinner Friday. for four on Friday. And you guys have a great day. We'll be back tomorrow with the Todd and Aaron morning stream right here on getpartdaily.com.